I first heard about Dutch company Donkervoort back in 2004 when I wrote a news report about them setting a new lap record around the Nürburgring. 7 minutes 18 seconds, taking the title away from a radical SR3 turbo, I was incredulous. How could this little car do that? This was a time when a Carrera GT in the hands of none other than Walter Roll was only setting times of a 7.28. Preposterous, I thought. Well, now, finally, I'm here to drive a new RS from Donkervoort. The question is, how can they really make a good sports car, let alone one that's good around the Nürburgring, when all the roads in Holland seem to be so straight and flat? This is the D8 GTO RS. It's the latest in a line of cars built here in the Netherlands since 1978. It's an impressive setup at the factory too. For example, despite being a small company, they make all their own carbon fibre, and their latest X-Core panels can withstand an impact of 2 tonnes at 60 km an hour. These carbon Kevlar panels are in fact fixed directly to the chassis to make them structural parts, a bit like a Ferrari F40. Recognisably an Audi key. Good. Because under the bonnet, it's a two and a half litre Audi straight five with turbocharger, obviously. Donkervoort actually manages to save a whopping 35 kilos over the engine that you'll find in the old Type 8J TTRS just by getting rid of various unnecessary ancillaries. The company also designs a new intake and exhaust for the five pot, and the end result is 380 brake horsepower and 369 pounds for the torque which is quite a lot in a car weighing 695 kilos. Now you say Audi 5-cylinder turbo and you have thoughts of Michel Mouton, Stig Blomqvist in Audi S1 Quattros, but this doesn't really sound like that at all. It sounds much angrier. It's really curious because this car, in some ways, it looks really futuristic, almost what you would expect Lotus 7 to look like if it was in a futuristic film and yet you get into it and you look under the skin and actually it's still very old school. Underneath the carbon skin there is still a steel tubular chassis. There is also a five-speed manual gearbox, no power assistance for the steering or brakes and the diff casing is actually an old Ford Sierra design, albeit with new quaff internals. I asked them why they stick with a five-speed box and they said simply that it's been developed a lot over the years and it seems a shame to get rid of it. Also they pointed out that a top speed of 174 miles an hour is plenty for a car like this. The 0 to 62 mile an hour time, by the way, is just 2.7 seconds. It's worth talking about the interior of this car because unlike a normal Lotus 7 or the previous Donker Wars, there's much more room in here for somebody of my height. I feel much lower, much more encased in the car. Tucked down from out of that slipstream. I love the bank of dials and toggle switches as well. Very aircraft. I particularly like the seat design, which is simple yet rather striking, and like a polite dance teacher, holds you firmly in all the correct places. I spoke to one of the owners of these cars before I drove this, and he said, What you really need is a racetrack. And I can see why. It's a proper animal, this. So we went to a racetrack, or at least a strange little test facility near an airport that had lots of police hanging around on motorbikes. Not ideal perhaps, but it did at least have some corners and a modicum of man-made variation in elevation. Matching is a huge help because with the unassisted brakes you don't want to compromise the force your foot is putting on the heavy brake pedal by trying to blip the throttle at the same time. The corners, these tyres, these hand I've never used them before. They're really progressive actually, they give you a lot of feedback. God, it's so 
The suspension is by double wishbones all round, and the dampers are three-way adjustable items by another Dutch company called Intrax. Those tyres, by the way, are Hankook Ventus TDs. Not rubber that I'd tried before, but they really did feel pleasingly progressive, which was just as well. You can change all the brake wires and traction control and ABS, but this is a prototype. So none of that's actually working. The D8 GTO RS is an intriguing car. The build quality is top-notch, the choice of engine makes it stand out from the crowd, and you're unlikely to meet another one at a track day, partly because each one costs over €150,000. In this age of assisted everything, the D8 GTO RS is an alarmingly, yet also reassuringly physical driving experience. A bit like growing your own vegetables instead of popping down the supermarket to buy them. Oh, I don't think I've ever driven a car that's quite so much hard work turning around as this one. My arms are going to be absolutely pumped, my skinny pipe clean little arms. It is a savagely fast car, and a track is certainly where this RS shines most brightly, although the idea of setting a lap time around the Nürburgring is intimidating. But there is little doubt that though it may come from a country with very straight, very flat roads, this latest Donkervoort RS would, like its ancestor, set a very impressive lap time indeed. To watch our film of the history of Donkervoort, where we drive important cars from the company's past, click on the top box on the left.